Hi guys, it's Eileen here. Um, I'm in the dining room now and I just wanted to give a quick beginning part of the video on how to make my raw beef. And I just want to, these are the two that I haven't uh, beaded yet. You can hear that, the kids are playing and stuff. Um, so this is them, two of them. And there's their holes. Uh, yeah, so, and let's see if I can show you the other ones here quickly. Sorry. I should have pulled them up. I was actually just going to show you right off the hop, but I'm just going to quickly. I have my little bin here. Ouch. Roughneck uh, Tupperware bin of. Oh. These ones are much more drier. This one is actually still um, damp. I was not uh, patient. And so I am. Um, so here's one. I was painting them before they were totally dry, which worked out. These ones are dry. Okay. Hear them? Okay, so this is one right here. On the cord. I burnt the ends of the cord so they don't slide off. So I did kind of like the whatever cowboy type of look of a necklace. I don't know what it's called. So that was cute. I mean, the it, one thing was it was the challenge, right? That we had in um, Creative cor Corner. And the other thing is that, you know, it's kind of neat. I was just going to, didn't know what I was going to do with them. But I thought, well, they'll be nice and light, right? Not like rocks. I've worn even my own necklace, my ammonite, I think it's called, necklace, and it's quite heavy, and the rock hits me in the chest, right, when they're doing some things. And here's the other one. So, it actually hangs like this. It's nice and light, and, uh... I mean, I don't know. We'll see what if people like it. But I mean, even if they don't, kids like it. So I can give away as gifts. Then people have to like it. There you go. There's the other one. Let's turn them around too, eh? I'm gonna turn this one around. That's the back of this one. So easy peasy. I'm going to move the camera down now, and I'm going to show you just the beginning parts, um, and I'm going to add, obviously, to this. So, um, it's easy. It's all paper. It's toilet paper. So, you guys, I'm sure you've seen people make beads out of toilet paper before. Well, it's, that's what it is. Um, you take a couple of squares of toilet paper, put them in your hand, you open your school glue. I've been using school glue because it's cheap. This is probably dollar store glue, I think it is. And this one's really been used a lot. So I'm shaking my table like crazy now. Sorry, the video camera. And I have my water. So I just have that in the palm of my hand and I give that a squirt and mix it up. More of a squirt. So that was two pieces of toilet paper. Oh, I forgot to do this, but I'm going to show you now quickly. Just to help it not stick, I sometimes, for the glue, put a little bit of petroleum jelly on my hands. Now that I got glue on them, that's really helpful. But anyway, I don't think that's going to work now because I had glue in my hand. But yeah, so I did that, and then I shaped it like a rock. I'm going to add another, I think I'm going to add another two squares to this. And that's all it is, guys. Now you do your rock shape. 
You could do any shape really. Uh, so you could do your and it doesn't matter how rough it is, how many cracks are in there because the when you paint it with the nail polish, it just looks great. So that's it. It's absolutely it. So you do any shape you want that you think that's a good pendant look and yeah it's very thick glue now because it's actually um, quite old so that's how I do it Add more. And really mix it in. I don't want to make it like a pulp, but I do want to roll it up and squish the glue through and just shape it to your rock that you want. And that's about it. So now I'm going to have like a kind of you know, you know, any kind of shape that you want of a rock. So, you can even make little bead rocks, like little round ones. But I was going for like the uh, really rocky look. And, uh, I have to get more glue. And, uh, so this is the first part. Tomorrow, I'll record the second part, and the second part will be just the painting. And that is just nail polish. So. Perhaps I should just upload this part. This is not enough glue in here. It's not mushy. You can feel it. feels like toilet paper still. Or maybe, maybe I squished it through. Okay. So it doesn't matter how bumpy it is. Um, it's going to work when you sand it down and you kind of make it almost like a little dough but it's not when you're mushing 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 just kind of squishing the works better kind of squishing the glue through the paper and that's it um, actually the kids did one here and it was yesterday. Um, I think Chloe did this one. And it's still squishy. And while I have you guys here, and I'm still recording. We got a bumblebee to do outside, Eileen. Okay. Okay, right now I'm recording, guys. You have to outside now, please and thank you. In the yard. Anyway, now I'm drying myself. So this one here is one of the girls, and just quickly I'm going to show you, I take my skewer, go behind where I think would be a good back piece, and just push my skewer through. I think I will have to get my other little teeny one where I have that. I have a skewer that I use for that usually. So I push it through and make the hole through.
piece from the work that has debris on it. I have a nice clear skewer usually for this without no debris so it doesn't stick. And that's how I do it right through. And that's when it's partly dry. I don't do it when it's wet. Um, and I just kind of twirl it through. A nice clean one usually and it's got a hole right through. And it's nice. So that's the day after I do this part. Go through the other end carefully so you don't catch any wet toilet paper in there. But when you do catch, it's just moving out of the way. And then you're ready for painting. So I hope that helped you guys. Um, I don't really want to paint this one because it belongs to one of the girls. So, but I'll just tell you quickly, and I'll just make another video tomorrow when these ones are partly dry and then show you how I did them and then, like, how I paint them. Paint them. So, so, anyway, I will quickly show you my nail polish. And that's what I painted them with. And tomorrow I will show you the, the sorry if I'm wiggling the camera, the rest of this. So, dollar store nail polish. That's what I used to paint these. Um, for this one, it was a black base all throughout the whole thing. I put this dark, dark blue, and I can't recall the stone that I was trying to mimic. Um, it's it's got a black base on it. It's a, a very bright blue on there. So I got put this blue, very light, um, almost dry brush it on. Then to brighten it up, I also add, I believe, this blue, dry brushing the paint on there. So that's what I did on both sides. Um, and then it looks like stone. You don't have to do anything else to it. It looks just like this. Um, the only other thing I did to it is I did um, emboss it with the ultra thick um, embossing enamel. Ima oh, I can't say it today. Enamel? Enamel? Blech. And that was just to protect it. And that's what I did. But the nail polish does a great job. And I didn't put a clear coat on it or anything. So the nail polish did a great job. I think I just added that because I wanted to make it more hard. So it, you know. Um, this one right here uh, was a gray almost background. I'm assuming you'd be able to use your acrylic paints as well. So it was this color background. And then um, Dollarama. And you can always go over it if you don't like the color. But anyways, it was this grayish. And I was going for the green. I was kind of trying to get the emeraldy color, but it's not quite what I wanted. Then I went over it with this, dry brushing it over, and a little bit of gold. And then... Um, a tad of this really light um, blue. It was almost like a cloudy color over it too, over this. So, and then of course I did the um, enamel, enamel as well. This one here I did half gold. This nail polish right here. The other half I did uh, blue. Um, which blue was it? I think it was this blue and then at the end I did the dark blue just dry brushing the ends and a little bit of this milky um, where did it go opaque no it was actually this blue I did the base on this half and then I did the dark blue a tad of dry brushing this blue mixing the blues a bit because they don't like blend like paints but it did work pretty well um, and then that milky color I was telling you that was a very light cloudy bit. And on this side I did the gold base and then I have this kind of copper and I did that. Um, now it's getting very dark in here. 
did that just very dry brushed on it. So that's how I did this. And I really, I mimicked the rock. I was on my phone looking at the rock and mimic, it was half, it was just really pretty. Um, this one, I was going for that kind of topazy color coming through and then like the rusty whatever. So it was gold base with dry brushing, this gold base, dry brushing, this nice tealy, whatever color blue this is, it's very pretty, dry brushing it on, dry brushing this red on for the red, the rusty colors, and that was it for this one. So it just, it you know, this one I was going for purple, I wanted the purple to kind of show, it wasn't looking the best that I wanted to look, so I added some gold, which fixed it up pretty good. That um, I just don't have great purples, so I think I used this purple as the base of the whole thing. Um, I did use a dry brush some of this on here as well. It wasn't just coming through just the way I wanted, so I also dry brushed quite a bit of gold on it. So, and then the enamels on top. You can always just cover it all over again and start over. It's not going to do anything to it. And I think I've got them all, I think. So that was it. Um, I'm going to, like I said, I have three here done. Maybe I'll do a few more and I could paint tomorrow. But it's this is already a long video. So this is going to be part one, I suppose. And then show you tomorrow the painting if anyone's interested in seeing that. So, um, yeah. Okay, thanks guys. I'll see you tomorrow.